Welcome to Clifton Hunter. My name is Mr. Stephen Clark and I'm one of the Deputy Principals. Today what I'm going to try and do is to share with you uh, some of the information that's going to help your son or daughter uh, as they move to Clifton Hunter from their primary school. Uh, we're outside at the moment the admin building. This is the drop-off point for students if they're dropped off uh, if they're late for school or if their parents come in to meet with any particular member of staff. Regularly during the morning time the buses would drop off at this point and students would have two access points to move through into the main school area. We're now going to move into the admin building so thank you. We're now inside the admin building. This is the reception area where as parents uh, you would come to either collect information or pass inform on information or if you're dropping your son and daughter off of aid for school. Within the admin area we have a number of uh, admin staff. If you move to the right hand side you will see Nicola who's a past student who's helping with Miss Rankin Baker and further along there you'll see Miss Minzet and Mr Gordon uh, who are supporting students and staff during the time uh, that were, were not in school from the actual school. If you were to move further around the admin area, you then find the library. As we move around the admin building, on the left hand side you'd see the medical centre. The medical centre uh, would house the nurse. We have a, a nurse who is generally here most days of the week. Also in that area, one of our counsellors, Miss Lees, uh, would be available there in that area. As we move down, you see some stairs. The stairs would take you up to a further part of the administrative building where you would find uh, Dr. Wildman, although Dr. Wildman, our principal, would often be on the compound uh, supporting staff and students. Upstairs you would find Miss Mader, our bursa, and also uh, Miss Hendrick, our special educational needs coordinator. As we move a little bit further down, on the left hand side you will see the food and textiles uh, teaching area, a uh, very good res resource. Um, uh, used by both uh, Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4 students. Uh, next we will move into the centre of the school. Okay. This is the central area of the school. As you can see there are a number uh, of areas that we could uh, move on to. On my right hand side you will see Lady Slater Academy and also if we go further around you will see the technical block. Uh, with graphic design, technical drawing, uh, automotive, also electrical in that area. Uh, if you were to go straight on past, uh, past me, uh, we have a really nice uh, area for the students who would be able to break and lunch. But also we would be going into the performing arts building and we will go into there uh, very soon. Off to my left hand side we have some Morco uh, building and then Goldfield building. You'll probably just be able to see the, the green side to the Goldfield building the blue side to the symbol. One of the great things about uh, the academy buildings is they're all identical so it's easy for the students once they realise their way well work their way around one uh, building they'll know all three. It seems a big compound and it is quite large but the students do find their way around quite quickly but on a positive note it also provides lots of space and areas for the students to branch out during the break and lunch time. We'll now move along the walkway into the performing arts. Here we are again, we're in the entrance to the performing arts. Up to my right hand side now is one of the drama rooms and we'll have a quick look at that one moment. Uh, up to my left hand side uh, we have the actual hall that we use for assemblies and for meetings and I'm just going to take you in there now just to show you. The hall is often used for assemblies, it can hold uh, an academy. We also have year group assembly, assemblies and then we also have meetings with parents and also uh, with other invited guests. So it's a, it's a great resource uh, to have meetings uh, and also it will be one of the first places that the students come in uh, to be welcomed. We'll now move on a little bit further down the performing arts walkway to go into one of the music rooms and also the other drama room. Moving into one of the music rooms. It's quite a large, very well resourced room. Lots of space, 
You can see the steel pans. We have a very good steel pan band, uh, and a number of the students perform when we have assemblies or particular events. You can also see the equipment that's out here now, uh, which is uh, ready to be used for when the students come back to school. As we go along the corridor now, we'll just have a look at one of the other drama rooms. As you walk down, there are uh, access for water and also bathrooms in this, in the performing arts area. A small stage has been set up in uh, the, other, the other drama room here. Uh, off to my right hand side, normally we have a number of computers uh, which enable particularly the Key Stage 4 students uh, who are studying drama uh, to reproduce a lot of their work using the laptops which can be used to support their examinations. We're going to move outside now. Okay, we're now going to move into the gymnasium area and at the back of the gymnasium area you'll also see our outdoor swimming pool. So we're going to move through here now. So this is our gymnasium area, uh, again an excellent resource, we have the bleachers to the side, we actually hold our graduation ceremonies in here, we also when we want to have our full school assemblies, uh, we hold them in the gymnasium here as well. As you can imagine, it's a resource that's used uh, very often, whether it's for uh, school activities or for the YMCA activities. I'm just going to move now through the corridor, past the changing rooms and then out to the swimming pool. So at the be beginning of the day, this is the entry and exit point for Simboco and Goldfield students. Uh, just in front of me here, you will see the Simboco uh, Academy, and uh, to the right, the Goldfield Academy. Uh, we will actually go through the entrance to the Goldfield Academy, but as I mentioned before, they are all exact copies of each other. So once you know your way around one academy, it's easy to get around Simboco and Goldfield as well. And they're, all, they're only on two floors, the ground floor uh, and the first floor. As we move down here, just a little bit of background about uh, the leadership teams within each academy. Uh, you have a deputy principal assigned to each academy, a learning mentor, uh, and then a teaching and learning coordinator. In year seven, there will be three tutorials in each academy, so nine year seven tutorials across the uh, compound. The tutor is one of the most important points of contact for your son or daughter, and through communication and the link with the tutor, it will enable you as a parent, but also more importantly your students, uh, to be successful and also uh, happy at school via that link. The deputy principal within the academy uh, is supported as we mentioned before by the teaching and learning coordinator who teaches along with supporting the teaching and learning process, the learning mentor who specifically links with the tutors and also with the students pastorally. We have three counsellors at Clifton Hunter, very experienced, uh, very able counsellors and we're very fortunate for that uh, and a number of students based on needs over a particular period of time will receive support from counsellors and this is quite common uh, and it's something that the students are used to and also often students have been used to this at primary school. We're now coming to the entrance of Goldfield Academy. You would enter by the glass doors, you would leave by the doors on the left hand side just to control the floor uh, and make it more of a safer entry and exit. As you go into the academy, you'll see that the, the area that you would generally find the leadership teams from each academy would be this area here. Okay, uh, your deputy, your teacher and learn coordinator, uh, and your learning mentor have their offices, their locations here. As we move through into this area, you will see on this side to the left side, we have some of the classrooms and we'll move into some of the classrooms in one moment. We have the bathrooms and something which we will all have to come to terms with as we move on in our new school experiences are the sanitizers. 
which we will need to use uh, as often and as needs be to make sure we're uh, safe. This is one of the canteen areas. There are three canteen areas, one for each academy. Students line up, uh, have the money available, uh, purchase their whatever they would like to purchase, and then they can either, either sit inside or sit outside. If students want to bring their own food, we do have access to microwaves to heat food up uh, so we can support them that way. You can actually pay uh, the, the canteen to, for a period of time, whether it's a month, whether it's a few months, rather than your son or daughter bringing money to school. So there is a process by which students can pay for a period of time for the food that they're going to purchase. Okay. Uh, as attached with this video that will be sent to you, we'll also provide information as to the cost and the foods that are generally served in the canteen area. We're now going to move into one of the teaching rooms, which is a science room. As you can see, the science room, this is a, a very, very large room. Uh, we have interactive whiteboards uh, and also, as you'll see, a lot of student work uh, around the sides. Oh, yeah, seven students uh, will take part in uh, investigational work. Uh, we know on the island there is the, the science competition, uh, which our students do enter and have been uh, quite successful uh, in the past. Again, you can see the Bunsen burner area around the side here, uh, and everything has generally been um, made, well, cleaned up so that we're ready for, for hurricane season. Okay, we'll now move into some of the other classrooms. One of the really important things you'll, you'll see in the classrooms is that uh, it's not split by actual walls. The, some of the rooms will share the space of other rooms. So it's an open plan system and one of the most important factors to take into consideration with open plan is to have an indoor voice, whether it's whether we're teaching or whether the students are discussing anything, it's that indoor voice which enables everyone to, to learn without interruptions. As we move in, this is one of the, as you, as you come in you can see, we've got 114 as in this is a ground floor room, anything on above this on the second floor would start with a 2. And the timetables that the students have are very, very easy to understand. Uh, I know as parents we're often worried in the transition of moving from primary to secondary. We fully understand those concerns, but you'll find that your son or daughter will adapt very, very quickly and find their way around the compound very quickly. Okay? Young people adapt to things often much better than older people do and they just say it is part of the process of growing up and also moving from one school to another. As we move through here, you will see again interactive whiteboard uh, this, and the room set out. And you can notice we go straight through without the uh, dividing, full dividing wall into another room. This is a social studies room. You can see a number of the resources on the walls. Uh, and some of the students work as well uh, and it's again we can't stress enough uh, the indoor voice we need an indoor voice whenever we're, we're in the classrooms and we're studying we move around to the right hand side here we come into an English room again similar setup to what we've already seen and as we come round through here we will move into a, a math room. Next we're going to move upstairs just so we can show you uh, one of the, the IT labs so you get an idea of uh, some of the, the rooms upstairs but also uh, the IT facilities for the students. So here we are upstairs, as mentioned before, you can see that we're on the second level. The number denote on the second level is the two, so it's 200 level, okay? Coming into this room here. This is a Spanish room. You can see by the, the work that's displayed around the room. And you'll also notice a lot, a lot of guidance documents uh, on the room, whether it's respect 24-7, growth mindset, attitude to learning, 
Um, lots of this information is shared and the expectation is, is that we have respect 24-7, we have a growth mindset and our attitude to learn is the best we can have when we're in school. As we move through, we move through into the, one of the IT labs and as you can see again, very well resourced, uh, the computer set out. I'm just going to explain something really important about entry and exit. If a student was entering this room, it's really important that they would enter via this door and they wouldn't walk through, as we've just walked through the Spanish class. The entry and exit will be explained to all students via their teachers. We'll also discuss it during assemblies. But it's really important that students do not walk through uh, the learning environments of other students to get to their lessons. There are expect expected entry and exit into class. We're now going to uh, go downstairs again and we're just going to share a little bit more information about the processes and organisation of the school. So we're going to send out equipment information, it's going to be sent out electronically and also there will be hard copy information uh, for parents to collect with a welcome booklet, uh, the equipment information, uh, information linked with uniform and hopefully you will, well, you will be informed during the summer uh, when the uniform shop will be open to purchase uniforms. We'll also give an idea of the cost of food uh, and the, the list of items that are served in the canteens. The only problem is this is 2019-20 so some of the prices might have changed but we're just going to give you that as an uh, as a indication of the, the cost of items and the, what is available. We're also then, uh, with the video, we're going to share that with all of this information. Obviously students are now starting a new curriculum where they have a variety of subjects uh, and they will need an exercise book for all of those subjects. For those subjects they'll generally have a different teacher and again this is a new experience but students adapt to it really, really quickly. So we're hoping by Wednesday, which is the 24th of June, we have a presentation that we're going to share with you via Teams, the Teams platform that students have been using for their online lessons. Uh, and during that uh, online meeting with all of you, we will, uh, you will meet with the leadership teams, the counsellors uh, and other staff uh, linked with the Year 7 transition. We'll share a PowerPoint with you, again linked with expectations and further information. And then we'll take a question and answer with, for any question or, or, or answer, answers that you would like based on your son or daughter starting with the school. The communication doesn't stop there. Following uh, the meeting on, on the 24th, we'll then indicate uh, where your, what academy your son or daughter has been placed in. How we place your son or daughter will be dictated by, from the information from uh, the department and from the previous primary school. We collect all of the data, all of the assessment data, and any information to support student placement. All of the academies are exactly the same. There isn't an academy that uh, has a particular strength in one area. All students are just split equally between the three academies uh, based on their data. And we try and uh, share all of the, uh, the strength, whether it's academic or whether it's sport, and between the three academies. Uh, also, if a sibling is in a specific academy, then we generally place uh, the brother or sister in the same uh, academy as their sibling. Okay, there's a rare occasion when parents ask for this to be changed. But if if you do want uh, a situation where your son or daughter is not placed with their brother or sister, then please let us know. During the meetings, we will provide contact information so that throughout the summer, if you need any further uh, information or advice, you can contact us. Again, my name is Stephen Clark. I'm one of the deputies. Uh, I will start the introduction to the meeting on the 24th on Teams. Uh, and again, if you have any questions after the meeting or during the meeting, we will try and answer them, uh, as well as along with, with your eventual academy and meeting, which will be a little bit later on uh, in July. Okay, so please keep safe, keep healthy. Again, 